is the derivative of formation out. So we know what we're studying. It's always good to get an understanding. Right? Okay. So God created the universe. He created the animals. Every animal that he created had its own form. Some are similar. Some are not so similar. Like you have some animals with four legs and, and a tail. Some have four legs and no tail. Right? You have some birds that fly. You have some birds that do not fly. Right? So, however God designed everything that he designed, it had its own form. You can see how some are really similar, like a zebra and a horse, you know, are very similar in what, in, in what they look like and how they function and how they move around, but they're different. Right, I like that. They have their own purpose, right? The fish, uh, you know, they swim. Some have a big fin on the back and some don't have a big fin on the back. Some fish have, you know, they, they consume their, you know, food with teeth, and some don't have teeth, right? So we get it. All have their own. God made man and God made woman. And uh, we recognize that in many cases, you know, some of the animals that were created that walk on two legs. Similar in how they move around, like man and woman, are similar in how they move around on two legs. But they're very different, aren't they? So, where we were in that class, I said, this male and this female is exactly what God created and what He designed, and nothing different. So then the question, well, how do we get all these deformities? I said, well, the fall of man caused a curse that also cursed the ground. If you see what God said to Adam, the ground is cursed. You did that. And everything we consume comes from the ground. So, you will have people born with different maladies and we're constantly degraded because from the moment Adam and Eve sinned, the ground began to lose its properties because man, sin did that. So, now we understand, I mean, there are medical reasons why children are born with deformities. Sometimes the parents are on drugs. Sometimes the parents do not scale back alcohol use. So, it could, yeah, you've got generational things that go on. I mean, there's other thing, but we do know that everything that we consume, even water, comes from the ground. So it's a, it, well, I almost, I almost said it's a miracle that we're all born normal, but, but I mean, when you think about it, you know, when you have people that, that are born without ailments, it gives you more reason to be thankful to God. Because the, earth, the ground is cursed and it says, there but for the grace of God go I. Yes. Right? Yes. But God knew, because one says, well, there's, you know, the people being born with both genders. That's how God wanted it. He said, there one said, no. This is how he wanted it. Male and female. Created he him. Right? Okay. So God's plan, even though He has He utilized.
utilize his permissive will. If you say, I'm going to drink anyway, even though I'm pregnant, he's not going to stop you. But you're going to pay through that child. Some kind of way, right? Okay. So everything God made has its own form. Okay. So formation, according to 1 Chronicles 12, 33, refers to order or preparation. Formation. Order or preparation. Formation. Order or preparation. According to 1 Chronicles 12, 33. Again, yeah, formation is that which is ordered or prepared. Formation, that which is ordered or prepared. And I see one person here with a special drink that uh, has some whipped cream on it and probably some degree of coffee in it and more than likely some crushed ice or blended ice because that's exactly how it was ordered. I noticed that earlier there were sandwiches being made that probably had a type of meat, certainly bread, and probably mayonnaise or mustard, maybe some lettuce. I'm trying to remember if I saw lettuce. Yes. There, but, but it was how you made it yourself. People went and and took the bread and began to form out, prepare their sandwich. Right. So um, every one of us has a way in which we like things or like things done. Some of us would be considered neat freaks. And I, I, don't, I never liked that term. But, you know, a neat freak is someone that while you're eating, they will take what is finished away. <laughs> you might not have gotten all the use out of your neck or your big job, and they're, they're going to confiscate it because they can't take it being on tape. <laughs> oh, you know, I mean, some people, uh, you know, if, if you are sitting on their sofa and you put the laptop to the side, they will come and fold it <laughs> and put it next to you because they can't stand Seeing it just tossed his eye like that. Yeah. Okay, it did. It's not presentable. <laughs> That's wrong with the OCD. <laughs> so, <laughs> some are gadget freaks. <laughs> and and uh, they have everything that they may need. They may miss bringing a notebook with things in it that's supposed to be brought, but they won't forget their gadgets. <laughs> right? So, 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 um, all of us have our quirks and things that we have about us, and we like things to be ordered or prepared, and some of us will lean in on, let all things be done decently and in order. Right? You know, some people's desks are just pristine. And others, you can't find the ink pen if you wanted to. <laughs> all right, all right. So, 
So, and one thing about pastors is we get so much mail that before you can open the first letter, you got at least 15 more coming behind it. The inbox has to be purged. And, and I'm learning to just start throwing it away. I know I ain't going to have to read this. So, trash, not because what was sent to me is not important, but I know I can't even read it. So why am I going to put it on my desk? Right? So trash, 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 trash. And when I have time, because I know one thing, it's coming again. Right? Junk bell keeps coming. Okay. All right. Okay. So spiritual formation refers to people prepared by God to function in ways that please Him. That's our working definition. Took us a while to get it. But we Him now. We Him. <laughs> people prepared by God to function in ways that please Him. Him. Now I'm going to pause at this time since one of our students is not here. You're going to have to write. Right here. Paul, stop. Stop recording. And write the, some ways that we have to behave that please God. And they cannot be what we identify later in this class. So if you don't pause and write it now, then you get a fail. <laughs> it's a boo to you. All right. All right. Spiritual form, huh? No, that's, I'm just bothering somebody that's not here right now. Should have ran while you had the chance. All right. People prepare by God to function in ways that please Him. Okay, so how does God go about humanity's spiritual formation? How does He do it? How does God go about our spiritual formation? So this is where the class now inserts your response. How do, you, how do you feel God goes about spiritually forming us? Or you. You can make it personal. I think through time. Through time. Life experiences. Through life experiences. Life experiences. That's a good one. Life challenges. Life challenges. Those are good right there. You get a chance to see what's going on and how God has smiled on you mm -hmm. in spite of it all. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or how he's guided you yes. through it all. Yes. Who else has that? How he met ways out of no ways. Okay. <laughs> and I, I just, I used to hear that and I'm going like, where did it come from? What's all that about? But then when you express it, yeah, he, he, he makes ways out of no ways, right? Keep experience. Yeah, keep going. No one puts in the word of God. And he gives you that kind of peace that surpasses all understanding. Oh. Okay. And I'm like, oh God, I heard that. But uh -huh. what is that? Until. Until you experience it. Yeah. Awesome. And knowing the word of God. What's in there? Right, you can't please him if you don't know. Him. Right. You gotta know what's in there, right? And, and and you can't please him if you're not obeying and listening and obeying. Oh yeah. Listening and obeying. Anyone else? Personal relationship? You have to, have, you have to have all those things. You have to have a personal relationship. Correct. Mm -hmm. He's got to be your BFF. Right, right, right. 
Anyone else before we go ahead? Before? Okay. All right, so spiritual formation happens by, there you go, first lady, studying the Word of God. You were all in my notes. Shame, shame, shame. She's cheating, everyone. She's cheating. <laughs> studying the Word of God. So, when we study the Word of God, some things come out that we should be doing. We remember Romans 12, 1 and 2. Does anyone remember that one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God, to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is a good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. That's important. The wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. You want to get paid, or do you want eternal life? You want the gift. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Study the word of God. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Study the word of God. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Work that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him. He will direct your path. You study the word of God, you find out what he wants you to do. Right? Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the earth. Remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy mind, thy soul, and thy strength. Love thy neighbor as thyself. These are all in the Bible. Right? If, if, if every time we get the Bible, we don't have to blow the dust off of it before we open it,
But the reason why God's word reads the way it does is because God is aiming for us to be like him. He doesn't want us to be gossipers, liars, worldly, cheap. It's clear 
and more direct. I have married people when after the service is over and the uh, reception ends, they just said bye and thank you. Nothing transferred. And then I've done weddings and you know, sometimes they said you did such a good job here. And when I opened the envelope, I was like, whoa. So you, you can tell how, you know, because the average amount that you will probably get to marry someone or to bury someone or to bless the babies or do the baptisms or any of those things, there is an average, there's a range that people tend to get. And you know when it's over the top when you open the envelope and you fall back. Mm -hmm. So uh, I tell, you know, because people have the nerve to say, they make all that money, right? But, but they, they think that even when you go and speak at another congregation, that you're going to get a large honor. And I, I've been told, thank you, by even pastors. And I'm looking. Like a guy on the church, you know, <laughs> got anything for me, and you get nothing. Right? But then, over the lifetime of the ministry, you know, it balances out. Right? So, it's, it's tough when you do, because you realize you did the counseling. If you married someone, you did all the counseling, you did all of the work with them, and usually, I do eight lessons of counseling, so that's probably eight weeks right there, unless we, or eight hours maybe. And then uh, we have a discussion on budgets and plans, which is probably the ninth lesson, right? So you, you've got at least nine hours right there, then you've got the prep, you know, the marriage prep event, which is that probably that Friday night, you come and do, you know, walk through and everything, and, and you know, got the, if you're going to do a unity candle, how that's going to work out. You can't put the candle in a place where the woman has to turn in, 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 in a way that's not pleasing. It can't be where she has to bend, right? So you got to set that stuff right. So if you're doing a candle or a, a, a sand, you know, you, you, it, it's got to be easy for her to get, get to that spot and either light that candle or pour her thing of sand in and get back to her spot without her having to feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Right? So I deal with logistics. Mm -hmm. And so some people say, well, all you got to do is turn like not, not in that dress, you ain't. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, know, you got to train on that thing. Right? So, you know, so she can't do a lot of turning. Do you understand that? It goes without a hitch. But you gotta think through all those things. So, uh, and to just be said, bye. Mm. Right? And, and, I, and you know, if I didn't show up, there would be no way. If I don't show up, y'all understand what I'm saying? And, 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 and uh, all right, so, moving right along. <laughs> Yeah, they pay their time. Right. Right. So they, 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 they presume yeah. that um, I get all rights and privileges of every member of the church. <laughs> and so I said, I'm a member. I get all this for free. You get the building for free. Because you're going to pay that musician. You're going to pay that sound engineer. And the one that makes the whole show go. Capital W, capital O, capital 
capital R, capital D. Jesus himself. And uh, there are so many images of Jesus I felt like uh, uh, I wanted an image that is closer to uh, my hue.